So Oklahoma State with their third consecutive NCAA wrestling title. And on top of all that, they had five wrestlers also win individual championships. So congratulations to the Cowboys for a dominating performance. Dominating, record setting, history making. Those were just a few of the descriptions that followed Oklahoma State's overpowering role through the NCAA Wrestling Championships. The Cowboys piled up a school record 153 points en route to their third straight national title and the 33rd Wrestling Championship in their unparalleled mad history. The three-peat was OSU's first since Art Griffith led Oklahoma A&M to three straight crowns between 1954 through 1956. Oklahoma State crowned a school record five champions. Zach Esposito at 149. Johnny Hendricks at 165. Chris Pendleton at 174. Jake Rochel at 197. And Steve Mako at heavyweight. For Pendleton, the only senior starter, it was his second national championship in as many years. OSU and Iowa are the only teams in NCAA wrestling history to ever crown five champions at the national tournament. The 70-point victory was the best in Oklahoma State's tradition-rich wrestling history and the second largest in NCAA history. It was yet another clean sweep for John Smith's Cowboys as they claimed championships at the national duels, the Big 12, and NCAA tournaments. I think this year's team, um, obviously they're special for what they did. Um, I think any time in, in when you look at OSU's history in wrestling, any time you can set some marks or break some records, um, you're looking at a pretty special team. You know, when you think of Oklahoma State wrestler in 75 plus years, and what we've done from Coach Gallagher to Coach Griffith, Coach Roderick, uh, you know, Myron Roderick and uh, Joe C, Tommy Chesbro. I mean, for this team to go out and put five in the finals and win uh, all five, uh, breaking the school record, um, it's pretty outstanding. At the same time, um, looking at some young kids as freshmen that stepped out there for the team and become All-Americans, that's big for your team. Um, it's inspiring for them. And obviously going undefeated all year at a very challenging schedule and a, a very tough schedule that really was set up for maybe some adversity. Um, but yet uh, getting through every dual meet and finding ways to win was, was something that uh, was pretty remarkable. Um, I understand the program I'm coaching and the expectations, not the expectations so much from the public, but from what I look at as where OSU wrestling should be. Um, and those expectations are high. Um, they're, they're through the roof. Um, and, and there's not a lot of times that you get a lot of satisfaction at anything but excellence. Um, and, you know, hopefully that, that wears off on your student athletes, uh, not only in the wrestling room and on the mat, but academically as well. And, and we have shown that in both places. Uh, and what comes with that is a lot of pressure. Not pressure from outside again, pressure from within uh, your own program. But I've said it all year long, and is that that pressure is a privilege. Uh, we've earned that. We've put our program in that position. Uh, we have to deal with that. Um, and that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Um, we should never punish ourselves for being great. We should march on and continue to set records. And what this team did, it broke records broke records for the school, um, broke, broke a NCAA record uh, for margin of victory. Um, this team did that and uh, that's what this team will be remembered as. Esposito set the tone for what would follow that afternoon in St. Louis. Two seconds, one second to the title. Jack Esposito, NCAA champion at 149, raises his arms to the Oklahoma State crowd, heads over to John Smith and Pat Smith. The big hug for both of them, a solid, no doubt about it, 5-2 to two victory over Phillip Simpson. I knew going into the finals that, you know, I'm the first guy out there, and uh, 
I need to get this team rolling a little bit. Uh, this year I knew that, I mean, not only for myself to win, but, you know, to get that spark going for the team. And once that spark grew and then once Johnny won, and then it just seemed like we couldn't lose from there on out. I mean, it definitely helps a lot when you see your teammate win before you because, I mean, we've been through everything together. And, uh, and to see them win, you know, you know, you know it's possible for you to win. That, that was the most emotional I ever felt in my life. I mean, it was the greatest feeling in the world. Um, at first, it was just like, oh, my God, I won. And then uh, just, just the surge of energy and just, just, just like all my emotions, all my buildup, all the training I've done, all the dreaming I've done, it just all came out of me there. And uh, to look over at the corner and see Pat Smith and Coach John, you know, and, and what they, they had to trust in me throughout my whole career here. And uh, to see them and to share it with them, it was just great. And I, I mean, I couldn't even explain the feeling. It was, it was just incredible. It was just such a huge payoff. It was, it was a relief almost that, uh, you know, it shows that things are possible and things are more possible to come. But I mean, next year, take the same approach we did every other year, but a little bit more intense. I mean, people are gonna keep coming at us even harder now. And uh, I think it's exciting. And uh, I mean, go into next year with the same mindset to win a national title, and this time maybe win six champs, win all 10. I mean, why not? Then it was Hendrick's turn. Five seconds to the title for Johnny Hendricks. Three, two, one to the title. NCAA champion Johnny Hendricks. Five, two with 2.55 riding time. Hendricks leaping and waving to the Oklahoma State crowd. Identical score to Zach Esposito. The Cowboys claim their second NCAA title of the night. Just went out there, you know, yeah, you're nervous, but as soon as you, that whistle blows, it all goes away. You know, you're thinking, you got to score. That's the, that's the only thing I was thinking, you know, for that first period. If you score a takedown, you know, you can control the match. And that's what I was thinking. To be up there and get your hand raised is something that you really can't explain, you know. It's just, it's just overwhelming. I wanted to be on the top ever since I was little. And uh, this year, seeing all that stuff and, you know, I knew that it was going to be a tough road. But, you know, really, I saw myself on the top, but me doing it was another thing, you know what I mean? Uh, working, making sure I did it all, you know, making sure I trained harder than anybody else out there, you know? And that's the thing, you know, if you train harder than anybody else and push yourself harder than anybody else, it'll show on the mat. And that's what I was worried about, and that's what I made sure that I did in here to be on top. Every year that I've been here, we've won, you know, and I don't want to lose that, you know, not you know, not for a while. You know, even whenever I'm gone, I want OSU still to be winning, you know, still on top. And that's the thing, like, we're gonna, you know, it's easy to let yourself slide once you're on top, but, you know, coach is always gonna be there making sure we don't, you know. We got, we had a good group of leaders this year. You know, we'll have a great group of leaders next year and, you know, the year after and year after. And those are the people that have to make sure they step up and make sure that the younger guys don't slide. Pendleton scored early and often as he posted his second straight championship. Time running out. That does it. Chris Pendleton, two-time NCAA champion, a roll to a 10-5 victory with the 219 riding time, 9-5 on the board. And Chris Pendleton gets it done as expected. Chris Pendleton pointing to the Oklahoma State fans with two fingers for two titles. The Cowboys, 145 points, a school record 145 points. And um, I was really actually excited to watch um, Zach and Johnny wrestle. And uh, seeing Zach win and then being right there, trying to get myself ready for my match, and seeing Johnny win, it kind of started uh, thinking, well, we could have five champions here. I don't want to be the one that drops the ball. And that's when the nerves kind of started setting in. But uh, um, my mindset was to come in and win again. Um, I really didn't think about repeating or defending the title because I knew I had to come out and you know win it again. I think that's where uh, my coaches did a really good job, just every day, you know, keeping me hungry to go out there and win another title. Well, a lot of times uh, you have to kind of be selfish. Um, you have to really think about yourself and getting yourself ready for that match. 
And if everybody does that, though, the team will take care of itself. And, you know, in tournaments it's a little bit different where you're really focusing on yourself. But dual meets, you know, we kind of do feed off each other and you see how, each, you know, how everybody's doing and it kind of inspires you and motivates you. Start of every season, you know, of course the goal as a team is to go out and win, um, you know, the team title. And I think this year our, our whole team really bought in more than any other year to making making sure we came out on top at the end and not only just at the end but every dual meet every tournament we went to we always wanted to come out on top what's the great part about this uh, for next year is I'm the only guy not coming back so these guys have experienced everything that they're going to need to to win that fourth one next year Rocholt had to beat one of the tournament's hottest wrestlers at 197 and escape with 13 seconds left, seal the deal. The time runs out as Jake Rochelle, two-time NCAA champion Jake Rochelle, is going to win at 5-4, four, 4 for 4 in the finals. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. They jumped that team total up to 149 points. Just a great a great feeling to, uh, to win another title and to uh, fulfill one of my goals. I think we were really driven from the beginning of the year. You know, I think a lot of us went home last year disappointed, and that uh, that really helped uh, helped us focus as a team. And then with our coaching staff knowing how hard it was going to be to win a third one, I think that all around pushed us to be really driven. Oh, we have tremendous team unity. I think especially just uh, having so many people that want to be champions. You know and that uh, turns around and just the team pretty much takes care of itself, you know, individually everyone's in practice room working hard to win their own their own matches and and strive to meet their own goals and I think that uh, the team just kinda comes along with that. Yeah, our fans are incredible. It's great to look up there and and see all the fans. It's really neat. It's uh, it's something that I think you have to experience to understand how important it is to this program and, and to all of us out there wrestling at the national tournament. Mako, who transferred from Iowa, put the wraps on OSU's finest individual showing since 1942 with his overtime decision. Three, well, put sweet by Mako, and it was a good one, and he takes him down! The Mako, the Mako man, 21 seconds into the sudden victory period gets the takedown and wins his second NCAA title. You know, it's a great feeling. It's probably one of the greatest feelings, you know, winning, winning it, having all your hard work and just come to the culmination and having that victory, you know, getting that victory, you know, that's that's what all the training was about. And, uh, you know, it's a great feeling. I, you know, you're just kind of happy. I, I was received with, you know, open arms and team is real tight in the team and we just kind of had great chemistry and came together right away. My, my style helped the, the team. I think everybody kind of picked each other up, but you know what I mean? Like there's different aspects of wrestling that everybody kind of brought to the table that made us a more fuller, fuller team. You know, we had a lot of different styles on the team and all of them, you know, we all wrestled well. So, I mean, they all kind of brought each other up, you know. People definitely rose to wrestle us. I mean, we wrestled the best out of everybody. Uh, they fired up to wrestle us. You know, anytime you wrestle in a program that that uh, is coming with the rep that we're coming with, you know, you're going to get their best. You know, uh, and that that you see that throughout the season. You know, we wrestle guys, and 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 uh, they give us close matches, or or uh, they give us close team-wise matches, and and uh, you wouldn't hear from them again after that. You know, I mean, we definitely, everybody definitely comes at the number one with their A game. You know, we had targets on our backs and. We, we, we had to wrestle through some adversity, and, and, and we did. John Smith was named Big 12 Coach of the Year for the sixth time since the conference was formed. He remembered his champions as individuals with one common goal. Zach Esposito. When I think of Zach, I think of sacrifice, I think of determination, and I think of hunger. Johnny Hendricks, I think of pound, pound, pound using his own words. Uh, that's his style, and that's what he did. Chris Pendleton.